as we develop the next fiscal year budget. Okay. Now let's talk about, if you don't mind, the two billion dollar uh, dollars. Uh, there was a legislature of North Louisiana and others who said that our, our um, we're spending two billion dollars more than we spent last year. So therefore, we don't need any more revenues. And you know, uh, the governor said that basically that's a myth. So could you explain? Well, it, yeah. it, 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 mm -hmm. it is a myth, and, and, and let me explain to you why it is. It is correct that our general fund budget, um, our overall budget, is higher by about $2 billion. I think it's not quite $2 billion. The primary reason for that is that the governor has authorized the expansion of Medicaid, and that is going to deliver to Louisiana federal dollars at a much higher match rate that has previously been in place. Previously, uh, the state put up 38 cents for every dollar, and the feds would put up 62, if memory serves me. I believe those are the correct numbers. Mm -hmm. For the rest of this calendar year, beginning July 1 for the remaining six months, the feds are going to pay 100 percent of the expanded Medicaid coverage. And then that will drop eventually to 90 percent, but it will go ratchet back to about 95 percent beginning um, January 1 of next year, the blended the blended rate comes to about 97.5 percent that the federal government will be paying for anybody who is part of Medicaid expansion. So that's about one point between 1.6 and 1.7 billion dollars of new money that is that has to be budgeted by the state and included in our budget. So that's 1.7 million right there of the approximate two billion dollar increase. The difference comes about because we've had to reconcile and fix the problems created by the Jindal administration because of their reliance for eight years on one-time money to balance the budget. And we did not include any one-time money in there. So therefore, we had to use recurring state dollars uh, to pay for recurring state expenses. We had to deal with the fact that the Jindal administration failed to recognize any increased in expenditures in the Medicaid program that previously existed when, in fact, they knew utilization would be higher as it's been each year, and they mm -hmm. didn't plan for that in their budget. And they also, as we've talked about repeatedly, postponed payments to right. medical providers so that in the previous fiscal year, we only made 11, not 12, monthly payments to physicians and other providers of Medicaid services. That meant we have to pay 13 payments in the fiscal year that began a week ago. And, and that number increased from what we would have had to pay because we delayed paying it. So we're going to pay about $10 million more than we other, otherwise would have paid. That's about $136 million right there so, of so, expenditures so, so, that we have, to, we have to provide for in the, the new fiscal year that simply was uh, – was forgotten in the previous fiscal year. So that's the, the, the short and simple explanation right. of why this budget has grown. And, and again, I don't think you're going to have anybody who, is, who will refute those factual statements that I've just made about how we got to this point in time. So there was not an increase in general funds. Uh, if anything, it was money that was uh, a couple hundred million dollars, am I correct, to repay some of the departments and funds that, that no, were not not to, yeah. not to repay the departments. I mean, this was about having to deal with the one-time, uh, mm -hmm. the 13th uh, payment that was yeah. added, yeah. and the fact that we had $800 million in one-time money built into the previous year's budget that we did not include in there. So when we started, we had to make up $800 million in recurring state general fund dollars to make up for the $800 million in one-time money that was part of Jindal's final budget. His going away present was the biggest amount of one-time money they had in any of the budgets. Okay, so we didn't have to go and repay that those departments that we took the money from. From, am I correct? No, they, we maybe did not, not dollar. Yeah. We did no, we did not dollar for dollar restore the money that was swept from these departments. The, these were funds that were in reserve that had been dedicated for a particular purpose, mm -hmm. um, one-time monies that were taken to balance the budget. And that's the that's a philosophical problem that that we have with the way the budget had been handled previously. It was a false budget. It was. It was not a, an honest representation of what the state government's annual needs were. 
funds were drained, um, money was swept, one-time money was used for recurring expenses that aren't going to go away after one year. And that's irresponsible budgeting, and we're not doing it that way. Okay, and uh, uh, one, one last question in terms of the, uh, the final budget. And as I uh, uh, appreciate, there's about a certain amount, I think, I think the number was 5%, that uh, each department is going to have to kind of uh, save in case the revenues don't come in? Uh, that, that, that is incorrect. It was reported okay. that way in some of the immediate articles after the, the session, but we have not imposed an automatic 5% uh, reduction in anybody's budget. What we have said thus far, and the governor has not issued an executive order related to this, but what we have advised departments and agencies is that we may be facing an additional $200 million shortfall in the budget year that just ended. And if that, in fact, is correct, or if there is any shortfall in revenue, it has to be paid first from the FY17 budget, which could cause us to have a shortfall when we realize these numbers later in the fall. And what happens is that we, um, we are on an accrual basis. So if as money comes in after July 1, some of it has to be credited back to our FY16 numbers because it was revenue actually generated in 16. If those revenue numbers are short and we have a mid-year deficit in the current year budget, we have to pay that first. And so we're saying to agencies and departments, be very prudent in your spending and recognize that it is possible, not, not, it's not official, but it's possible that we're going to have a shortfall that we'll all have to be dealing with, and we want agencies to be cognizant of that. In case we have to cut their budget, we want them holding some money back with the knowledge that it may be necessary to cover this shortfall. If the shortfall doesn't exist, and we certainly hope it doesn't exist, then the agencies are, well, obviously will be free to, to uh, spend the sure. budget that's been allotted by the legislature. So we're just advising caution to everybody right now, but there's not a particular order to withhold 5% or any particular percent at this point in time. But we've, we've acknowledged publicly and we told the legislature as soon as we became aware of this that we could have a potential problem um, in closing our books for fiscal year 16. I do understand. And I really appreciate <laughs> the time that you've taken to explain some of these things to me. Uh, you know, and and uh, to our, uh, our uh, readers and our audience, uh, I, I know there's been a lot of uh, uh, misstatements, misconceptions, uh, political or uh, otherwise. Well, there yeah. have been, and, and obviously we want to try and give as much information as accurately as possible so people will understand the, the, the true situation that we're facing.